Okay. Ready? Uh, yes. To you. Okay. Uh, we, we have the pleasure now. Alors, wait, wait, wait a minute, Jack. Uh, just okay. I need to share my screen. Uh, with the talk, actually. Ah, here it is. Clack. Bon. Plus, plus, plus. Magnificent slide. Uh, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Attends, plus, 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 plus. Attends, comment je fais pour... Ah, voilà. Can you see? Yes, yes. Just... Maybe, maybe I, I can it. put a full screen now. Oh. Ah. Is that okay? Ah, perfect. It's perfect. We have the pleasure to welcome Pierre Michael from Bordeaux. He will speak about can mathematical modeling help to understand COVID-19 data? Oh. You have 30 minutes. I, I, have, I have a small problem uh, wait with this full screen story because I don't want uh, for us it's perfect it's perfect whenever okay so thank you very much for coming and and listening this talk so today I will talk about so I will try to respect my role the 30 minute uh, talk role and uh, so it's a brief uh, description of uh, several paper and the, the goal uh, uh, of this work was to uh, deal with data for COVID-19 indeed and so um, we, we want to consider uh, the problem of uh, identification of parameters for some simple model with a, a, a priori a, a limited number of parameters as limited as possible And uh, an important aspect I want to emphasize here today is uh, uh, the role of the initial condition in, uh, in this process, which is very important, in fact. And, and so uh, and in our goal is uh, to reconstruct and forecast an epidemic uh, from the data. So, okay. So I will start with some basic fact about COVID-19. Um, so uh, I got first interested by those uh, unreported case problem, which is a, 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 an important problem. It means that part of your data, uh, what you what you get as the data is just part of the problem, actually, and 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 only a fraction of of the cases are, are reported in reality. So everything starts, uh, there are some evidence about that, and everything starts with, uh, uh, in the case of COVID-19, everything starts with a, a meeting, business meeting in Germany, where uh, one guy came infected. This was at the early beginning of uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic, and one guy came infected and transmitted the uh, Uh, transmitted COVID-19 to other participants uh, of this meeting. Nobody knew about this until later on when pe people got tested. Huh? And oh, I have some problem with uh, changing changing slide. Uh, let's see. Another example uh, for unreported was uh, another evidence for unreported case is this. Uh, Uh, diamond princess uh, example in Japan, where uh, certain people were, were evacuated and and um, and certain for uh, were inf were infected only and 30 percent of people never developed in any symptoms. So basically, there, there are no reason to test those people. So the, the fraction of unreported cases might be very important. Um, there are other evidence on the French, uh, the French air, aircraft carrier, Charles de Gaulle, where, um, where uh, 24% of people were totally asymptomatic hein, while, while they were uh, actually uh, infected. Uh, uh, still. So basically, what, what are unreported? Unreported are 
are those guys who have mild symptoms and they never get tested just because there are no reason to test them, right? And so uh, and another, another reason for unreported might be due to the low level of number of tests. That's what I want to show you now. We did, sorry, uh, we did some uh, joint work with Quentin Griette about this for New York State. And, and on, on this figure, what you can see, you get the total number of tests for the black curve here. And you get in uh, orange uh, the number of positive tests uh, and uh, in blue, the number of negative tests. So that's here the first epidemic wave for New York State, in fact. And you see that the influence of the number of tests, the number of tests is increasing at the beginning. And, uh, and, 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 and for example, here you see a peak in the number of tests and you see this a peak in the number of tests, uh, of cases, sorry, due to this increase in the number of tests. So this figure shows that, that there are some, some relationship between the number of tests and the number of reported ca cases. Huh? And uh, on this figure that may look crazy, uh, which I find very interesting, uh, here on the, so here the black curve corresponds to the data. The blue curve corresponds to what we obtain with um, our model, in fact. And so on the horizontal axis here, you see the daily number of tests. And on the vertical axis, so, there is a dynamic for the number of tests that is uh, what it is, that is totally uh, random, more or less, uh, by the way, uh, and that is just increasing at the beginning and then become more, very random, as you saw. And here is the number of tests, uh, of case, uh, reported cases, daily number of reported cases. So basically, those figures are very complex because they combine the dynamic of the number of tests and then the dynamic of infection in the population. And what you see in the data is the resulting, uh, the result of this uh, complex combination. And, uh, and uh, as you can see here, we were able to reproduce this complex curve by using our model. So as an input of our model, we enter the daily number of tests, and we were able to reproduce with an epidemic model the, the output uh, uh, relatively well, uh, if you consider the complexity. And on the right hand side, you see the cumulative curves. So here that's a cumulative number of tests, and here that's a cumulative, sorry, I don't know why it's not working. Uh, so on, on here it is the uh, uh, cumulative number of cases, and we we get a pretty good fit. Anyway, the point of this uh, I cannot even use the escape. Ah, finally, let's see. Uh, something goes wrong with it. I think that the combination of Zoom and and uh, together with the full screen. Huh? Uh, maybe I should uh, continue to use the full screen, otherwise you see half of it. Ah, it's working now. Good news, finally. And so um, next, I want to talk about uh, about what we did at first about uh, an, ep an epidemic model, including unreported cases. Uh, basically, what I want to emphasize here is the uh, identification problem from the data. So I want to forget now this problem, this problem of number of tests. And I want to go back with uh, data. You should think about the data, for, uh, the reported case data. And we want to compare a model, uh, including the uh, susceptible infectious reported and reported, and death or, or dead or recover. And this model, we, we introduced this model at first uh, at the early beginning of uh, the pandemic of COVID-19, but it turned, it turned out that this model was already considered in an early paper by Julien Reno and, 
and 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 other people that most of you know like uh, for example Jean Wang Wu we heard about him uh, just before in the previous talk and uh, so this model was considered but the methodology we developed there was is new and the methodology was about how to how to compute the initial value that's what I will talk about now so you consider I simplify the model here just to make things very simple right look simple say it's not simple in fact so what you want is you have an si model so susceptible infectious here and and uh, you have a time dependent transmission rate and that you want to identify later on and you have a a, a rate a recovery rate here and so one of the new is the average duration of the asymptomatic infectious period and then uh, this 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 quantity here is a flux of susceptible becoming infected huh? and that is this quantity represents here the flux at which you leave the state i okay and and combined with this you should not forget that you need the initial value and that's a problem because for this one we know more or less at the early beginning, what should, what should be S0 should be almost all the population, which is not clear, by the way. But the qu question is, what, what do you take for this one? And by the way, what do you take for, for T0 also, in, by the way? The initial time uh, start from which you start to apply the, uh, the epidemic model. Huh? And another ingredient, another important ingredient you should uh, combine with this is you need a model to uh, represent, the, to connect the, the, the model with the data. So you need, a, here we use, we assume that a fraction of the flux leaving the high compartment is becoming reported, is, is reported, and this model was uh, introduced at first in uh, in some paper uh, we wrote jointly with uh, Glenn Webb in Journal of Mathematical Biology, 2018, in fact. And so F is a fraction of people with severe symptoms, uh, and one minus F is a fraction of people with mild symptoms. Huh? And so in the end, what is given, what is uh, computed, so for France, say, uh, for French, you, you, you fix S0 to be the whole population. T0, uh, you need to fix T0. And T0 is a time uh, from which your mod epidemic model start to be valid for the data, okay? Which is, uh, again, uh, relatively uh, not so easy to, to do. Uh, this guy is the average duration of infectiousness. So we, we say that here it is three days and we fix this fraction to be uh, 90%. And now we need to compute, once we fix these guys, we need to compute I0 and tau of T, okay? And so we need to fix the initial number of infectious and we need to uh, compute the transmission rate. Uh, and so what is the transmission rate? The transmission rate combine the number, the, 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 num, the contact rate. So that's uh, taking care of, of the average duration of contact huh, between people, combine uh, times the probability of transmission. And so the point is these two quantities are time dependent. Uh, indeed, uh, once the epidemic starts, uh, uh, the epidemic starts, uh, people start to be afraid to be infected. So the contact rate uh, uh, decrease or due to, uh, um, so, so you, due to social distancing measure, uh, the contact rate decrease. And um, so the number, the average number of contact per unit of time is also uh, density uh, of population, depending on, on the density of population. This was something uh, investigated by the group of uh, Jacques de Mongeau. And uh, also it is the, 
the probability of transmission is depending on the temperature and the humidity and also the ultraviolet because the ultraviolet might destroy the virus uh, uh, in the air uh, during the transmission. And so this was something uh, that was also investigated. Another aspect is uh, the susceptibility of people may depend on several aspects, aspect like the blood group, group sorry. For example, people with uh, blood group O uh, have a lower, uh, are less susceptible than other group. Huh? And the genetic lineage also uh, may, may also have an impact on, on the susceptibility. And uh, this was a paper uh, where, where this was observed in some paper. Anyway, that's just to tell you it's extremely complex. <coughs> At any level, there are, there are some uh, extra complexity. Huh? Uh, and we want to look at uh, uh, an extremely simple case just to begin with, right? To have a, uh, and so here, if you, as you look at the, uh, so the idea to estimate the initial time, uh, the initial value for the infect, infected, and uh, is to uh, assume that you are at the early stage of the epidemic only. So the number of S is all unchanged. So you can assume that S is constant, which is known by the way. And the transmission rate is also assumed to be constant at the early beginning. So we are talking here about a week, two weeks, no more, okay? And so it's relatively short period. Huh? And so if you replace that into the equation, you get uh, an infected uh, group that is growing like an exponential. Now you replace that in the equation for the uh, reported cases, and you get a formula like that, that is an exponential minus a constant. Okay? And so now you get a, 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 what I call this guy will be the first phenomenological model, maybe the only one here, I have no time to go into detail, uh, uh, to, to compare with the data, okay? And so now you look at the data from mainland China, and as I said, you, you consider a short, uh, a short period of time here, a few days uh, from February 19 to February 2030, probably, yeah? and, and and you see that you can, you can fit uh, the data with such an exponential very well. So now you can, you can replace the data by the, by the formula you obtain, that is your phenomenological model. Huh? And uh, once you replace this uh, formula into the model uh, here, this one, you obtain a formula for I0. By because I zero will be you, you simply compute this guy for t equal t zero, huh? and so you just need to differentiate this guy, this formula here, and you get this one. And on the top of that, you, you replace into the equation, and you also get a, an initial value for the transmission rate huh? to begin with. Okay, so now you keep the data from mainland China, and what you get is. That's your, your per, the period where you fitted the, the exponential here. And right after you leave, uh, you diverge, the exponential diverge from the data. But you see, if you keep the model autonomous, you, uh, you follow at the early beginning the, the exponential. Huh? So it means that you need a time dependent transmission rate in order to to follow the data here, okay? Okay, I won't go into too much detail for this. I have no time. I will just show you some results uh, we obtained. Uh, this slide is just to tell you that we are far to be the first. And since uh, London and, and New York already consider such a problem in the 70s, using discrete time uh, epidemic model, and they fitted the transmission rate to some data. I forgot now how oh, it's written here to, uh, to several diseases here. And more recently for COVID-19, there was 
some uh, studied we, we we got inspired from by by the group of Yvon Made, Olga Mula, who, who gave a talk in this webinar, by the way. Okay. And so um, here we developed a, a model, a phenomenological model that is following the uh, cumulative reported case data. And uh, so we have, we, we need to distinguish different regime. One regime is uh, so-called endemic stage at the yellow region here, the, the yellow backward region and the blue region correspond to the epidemic phase, okay? And uh, we have a very limited number of, of parameters uh, uh, here. And uh, the model, model are pretty simple. Huh? And when you differentiate the, 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 the red curve uh, with respect to time, you use one day as a unit of time. Then you, you, get, uh, you get a good tendency also for the daily number of reported cases, OK? And the point is, it took us a lot of time to uh, find the, the model, the phenomenological model that is uh, not only fitting the data, which is not a big deal, in fact, that will be meaningful when you recover the transmission rate. Okay, I will explain you this later on. But so here we did that for uh, eight uh, uh, country and states, uh, for only California state, by the way, which is about the size of a country. Um, and, and, and as you see, uh, we were able to follow the, oh, sorry. Oh, it's too small now. Uh, plus, 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 plus. Uh, oh, perfect. Almost perfect. Almost, I don't know if it's perfect yet. Yeah. And so we were able to follow here uh, very well the uh, cumulative data for California. So we got one, two, three epidemic phase for France, one, two, three at that time. For India, only one epidemic phase huh? uh, because they never stopped anything, no shutdown. Uh, for Israel, there was uh, four epidemic phase at that time. And for Japan, Japan is interesting because at the beginning, we, we got these two epidemic phase, which are evident, but then the dynamic become a little complicated. And so in order to fit very well the data, we were forced to, to decompose this epidemic phase into three, in fact. Huh? So it's the dynamic is a little, probably more complex than uh, other in, in this epidemic phase here. And that's for uh, Peru. Uh, that's because the wife of Constance from Peru, we should have had Chile, by the way. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's for Spain. We got uh, four epidemic phase. That's for UK. Uh, we got three here. And so what's the point now? So we got from this, we, we will be able to recover the transmission rate, a meaningful transmission rate that, by the way, stay not positive. Huh? That's, a, 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 that's a difficulty, by the way. Uh, and so we define several notions of R0, uh, reproduction number, in order to compare uh, the different notion and in order to understand uh what uh, to understand to to use those indicators to 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 draw some conclusions so we use an r not with the instantaneous reproduction number with a time dependence uh, number of susceptible and we fix also the number of susceptible that is in order to see um in order to see uh, how, how fast uh, the epidemic is exhausting the population of susceptible. Huh? And we also use a standard R0 that is used by uh, most of the people in public health, huh? uh, by the, that was introduced by the group of Boel and Koshmes. 
and I will, I will, we will compare to what we obtain also. So here, on the, in this first uh, line of uh, uh, figure, we compare the R not uh, uh, the instantaneous reproduction number. So in green will be with S zero, in black will be with S of T. Okay. So we see that the impact of the epidemic on, on the number of susceptible here has almost no effect until the third wave, okay, for California. For France, the same. In fact, it's even small, the, the distance is even smaller. And that's for India, of course. Uh, we don't see even see uh, any difference uh, in, in the, the effect of the, of the change in the number of susceptible is not visible. And for, for Israel, we need to wait the, the fourth wave and uh, so basically, we see that uh, the variation in S is, is not uh, si significant. Huh? And the same here for Japan, no difference at all, huh? while the green curve is behind the, the black one, huh, for sure. And, and, and for Peru, we need also to wait until the, the third wave to see something. For Spain, almost no difference until the uh, the, the force and for UK, it's even dif uh, difficult to see. Huh? So anyway, that just to show to show that um, basically taking S constant or, or S time dependent is not is not uh, so important. Is, is, it is not uh, making a big difference here. And so uh, that's one conclusion. And the other one is uh, we, cons we compare our instantaneous reproduction number with the standard one by uh, the standard one that is random, by the way, uh, computed, computed using random simulation. Huh? And so, uh, in fact, we see a good correspondence here. Maybe here at the beginning, the correspondence is not good, but that's again a problem due to the uh, to the form uh, the problem is coming from the fact that there is no real initial value in their formula they don't take care of the initial value and so uh, here the same we get a good correspondence after some period of time and the same here we get a good correspondence here so basically, uh, what we what we got is uh, is corresponding very well to the uh, to the uh, classical stuff. Just to make something something clear, to make to emphasize on the importance of using a phenomenological model. That is what you get with for the R not when you use a phenomenological model, so smoothing effect, but you, the point is to capture a tendency huh? uh, also for the transmission rate. That's what you get for the original da data. Huh? So basically you could smooth by using, for example, a cubic spline and so on. Uh, somebody could turn off the, the radio, or I don't know. Uh, somebody is uh, using a radio or something, and so uh, so so the the use of the phenomenological model here is very important. In fact, so the first conclusion I want to uh, draw is uh, is the fact that basically the model that should be used is a linear model, but non-autonomous. That should be compared to the maybe I, I shut down this guy who is there. <laughs> What's here? Ah, uh, die hey, die high. You are, you are, you are. <laughs> Okay. And uh, so, yeah, here. Huh? Yeah. And so. I said uh, uh, at the beginning you mentioned the paper, uh, a German. Wait. Team? Y yes, I'm, I'm not. Uh, sure. in, uh, you, you in, please uh, wait until I finish the uh, finish my talk to ask the question. Uh, hello. Can I finish my talk? I still have. <laughs> it would be nice to have 
<laughs> right? Yes, I have almost, I have almost finished. finished, okay? So please wait. Three slides. <laughs> okay? Uh, so the point is, uh, we get... Uh, 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 the, the, a good model is actually linear, uh, but, but, but so S should be should remain constant. But the point is to evaluate this guy here, the transmission rate, huh? and to evaluate I zero. And now, why uh, I zero is so important? Because you 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 divide by ten I zero, you divide by ten the number of cases actually. So that's probably why the prediction. That's one reason. Uh, for, for which the prediction are, are usually so wrong is that nobody is taking care of the initial value. It's even not mentioned in most of the paper, by the way. And so uh, the, the method to develop, uh, to compute the initial value is very important. And I, I want to also to insist on the fact that the common idea in, idea in population dynamics is to look at the first eigenvalue. So like in the previous talk, by the way, people look at the first eigenvalue and that's a good idea as long as uh, the asynchronous exponential, exponential growth regime is installed. But as we can see here, and uh, in fact, that's the data for Japan at the early beginning, depending on the age group. And you can see that you get different exponential growth for the age class, okay? And so, in fact, uh, even though the model is linear, uh, we, are, we, we, we are we are at, in the transient, in fact, it's we, what we observe in the data here is a transient behavior that is converging exponentially fast, but maybe slowly to, uh, to uh, an asynchronous exponential growth regime, in fact, to an, a single exponential. So I want to stop here and thank you for your attention. The discussion is open. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, please. Attends. Comments. Ah, finally, I can. Questions. I can. Who was asking a question before? Let me see. Ah, Alain, Alain. <laughs> yes, I say that. So surprising that a gene coming from Neanderthal is uh, associated to importance of uh, disease. And uh, I, I can hardly hear the person who's speaking in the lecture room, actually. Yes, when you speak about uh, the importance of the disease and complications, you say that when gene coming from Neanderthal is associated to the gravity of disease. Yes. Ah, yes. You, are, you are mentioning the, 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 the oh, I, I think, I, I think I can hear what you are. This one, you are mentioning, what was that? The, uh, the genetic yes. lineage? Yes. yes. Ah, yes, actually there is a paper published in Nature uh, uh -huh. about this, uh, uh, this risk. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's amazing because it's, it's amazing. Uh, I, I follow uh, with, very, with a lot of attention the, the genetics, uh, archaeogenetics. It's very, very interesting. But it's uh -huh. very interesting to see that archaeogenetics appears in a uh, gravity of uh, COVID disease. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You have a region in your uh, genome, yeah. which is called Altai region. Yeah. yeah. And this is still Altai, probably uh, 
these risk factors. Yeah, it's that, that risk factors coming from Neanderthal. <laughs> impressive. Nice, no, impressive. Yeah. Okay. There is some fragments in the COVID-19 yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, okay. genome susceptible to I will not uh, restart my talk. <laughs> <laughs> I will not answer that. 10% I think. Oh, Altai is too small. Altai will not be able to get 5%. Please speak in English. Please speak, speak in English. <laughs> <laughs> we recommend the uh, presence in the human genome, especially in France, of a region called Altai in which you have all Neanderthal genes. And probably uh, this susceptibility is coming from this small region. But it, it involves probably the theory of uh, RNA fragments, and we will not insist on this point. Yeah. Other uh, comments? Um, ah, another question. <laughs> uh, I'm a bit curious. I, I missed something. Uh, it's how do you define the different phases of uh, the epidemic, the uh, endemic and, and epidemic phases? Excellent question. Ah, 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 ah. It's not easy. It's, okay. uh, uh, it's not trivial, in fact. And, and so uh, that's something, in fact, uh, okay, I can show you on, on the data here for France. Of course, at the early stage, nothing, okay. But the point is, uh, you the point is to you first define the epidemic phase, all right, and the remaining region will be the endemic. So what you do, you fit uh, uh, a Bernoulli Verrells model here to the data. Actually, you fit that to the cumulative <laughs> data here, and as you can see. Here, it's, it follows a line, okay? Yes. Uh, and, and that's our model, in fact, for the endemic, endemic period. So, so and it's very surprising that in so many data, it's very much like uh, a line here uh, in between the epidemic phases. And the same, actually, let me increase the size here. Um, oh, right here. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe a bit more easy to see. Uh, the same here, in fact. Uh, but it's, it's difficult to, in fact, it's difficult to decide. We decided more or less visually huh, for those okay. periods. Huh? And, and also, we, we, we try uh, many different values for the period in order to, to obtain a best fit to the data. Huh? Would it be a, a domain in time where you have the best fit between your epidemic model and, and the actual data? Actually, the model will follow perfectly the, the blue curve. Okay, okay. With, uh, with this, uh, will follow perfectly. So that's why we don't need to plot, in fact, because we know we, we compute the transmission rate in order to, to fit perfectly the, those blue curves. Okay. Uh, for the cumulative, huh? I guess. and so uh, and so uh, there, there is no need to 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 plot. Uh, well, it's not always so perfect. Okay, let's be clear, and uh, because there are some approximation and so on, so you need to be uh, at some point you need to compute some derivative of those functions and so on may create some problem numerical problem. Okay. But, uh, but more or less, uh, uh, we get some uh, really good, uh, really good fit with the epidemic model anyway, okay? The detection, okay. The detection of the transition time is still a, an open problem. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 sure. A very okay, it's a, a problem. Uh, and, and in the paper of Bernoulli, he has uh, already uh, detected this problem. He was the first to speak about endemic and epidemic. Yeah. I yeah. see it's extraordinary. Yeah. But, uh, 
the break between the two physicists it's, it's very important because to anticipate the wave you have to yes to detect yeah. the, the frontier point now it's a very interesting okay uh, uh, uh minutes wait five minutes or, uh, no? I think, uh, uh, let me see, there are some also, um, uh, the problem is I, I did print the size here, I cannot hardly read, read it. Ah, now I increase again the size of the question. What was that? Let's see. We got, have you estimated the value of the, in the formula for the open? Uh, he has uh, so, he got, yes, sure. We estimate the transmission rate uh, from, uh, as I mentioned, I, I think, okay, let me be clear about, oh, plus, let me be clear about, like I mentioned, okay, here in my talk earlier, we fix S to zero and one over new and F in, uh, from the beginning, and we estimate in the formula for R0, I0, and, and, and two of T, okay? But I0 is also important, by the way. But in the formula for R0, we need to estimate uh, two of T, which is a key, okay? So that's to answer uh, uh, Igor. Uh, Annabelle, uh, uh, no, Abdella. Uh, is, is there a bit? So the point between, I must, I think there is a question about the different notion of, of instantaneous reproduction number. Let me, let me just uh, explain again. So the point is in one formula, we, we fix, so that is a standard instantaneous reproduction number formula here, which, which can be extended to larger system, by the way. And, um, and the, the point is to regard this as an indicator, okay? And uh, the interesting part is to compare the different notion, the different indicator. So here we, we, we compare this with the case where S is unchanged to see the impact on the epidemic on the susceptible class to see if the, if the epidemic have an impact or not on, on exhausting the susceptible class, okay? And because usually an epidemic stop because you exhaust the population of susceptible that is relate, relative to the, the number, uh, of the transmission rate also, and huh? that is time dependent here. But, but, but in fact, it turned out that here, it's absolutely not the case. The epidemic stopped due to the change in the transmission rate only, not due to the uh, decay in the number of susceptible. So it means that if you, you stop the uh, distancing measure and so on, confinement and so on, then the epidemic start over, start again. So, uh, in fact, that's to take care of this, that we introduce the two different notions of, of R0, in fact. And then, indeed, we compare with the classical one, right? I think I, what? Aha. Uh -huh. uh, by the way, I forgot to mention that another, uh, about uh, somebody is asking me about the title. Uh, so here, I think uh, about my title is, is uh, about what can we say about, about uh, from the model about the epidemic of COVID-19. For example, here we could, we, we could say that uh, in fact, only the, uh, the, public, the social distancing and public health measure has an impact. Uh, uh, that's something we can say from the model. Uh, but by the way, the model we are considering here is very simplistic, but things can be extended to larger cla class or more complex model. 
But the point here is to, to present a, a simplest, the simplest uh, epidemic model in order for people to understand, to emphasize on the uh, importance of the initial value. The initial value is very important in, uh, in, this, in this problem uh, and far to be completely understood. Either. Okay, so I will stop here. Okay, we will apply the Magal's rule and we will stop your presentation. <laughs> thank you very much for this marvelous talk. Thank you, thank you. Alors, le, le R qu'il a, qu a montré avec le S, c'est cette groupe de boîtes qu'on a fait. Alors, euh,